In the previous two lectures, we have had a look at energy use in transportation and in buildings. However, the largest share of global energy use is in industry, or in other words, making things. There are certain types of industry which require a lot of energy for making their product. These are known as energy intensive industries. Industries where the primary energy requirement is more than 3% of the total cost of making the final product are considered energy intensive. It should be noted that this rather arbitrary classification refers only to primary industry, that is industry which use freely available raw material to form their end product. Iron and steel is a primary industry since it uses iron ore available in the earth's crust to form steel. The automobile industry which uses steel as a raw material to make cars is a secondary industry. The, automo the automobile industry is not considered to be energy intensive since the energy embodied in the iron and in steel is not included while calculating the energy requirement of automobile manufacturing. The industries where the energy costs are less than 3% of the total product cost are called light industries. These include food and drug processing, textile, automobile and pulp and paper industries. The steel industry is one of the largest in the energy intensive category and forms the backbone of almost every other industry. The annual global steel production stands at over 1000 million tons. Over half of the steel is used in the construction industry. 16% is used to manufacture industrial equipment. 16% for other metal products and the remaining 12% in the transportation industry. Of the total annual steel production, 9% goes into manufacturing cars and other light vehicles, while 3% is used to manufacture trucks, ships and other heavy modes of transportation. 12% of the steel is used in manufacturing metal goods such as cabinets and chairs. 3% is used in making electrical appliances like washing machines and 1% is used for packaging including milk cans and ster sterile food packaging. 30% of the steel is used for manufacturing mechanical machinery while 3% is used for electrical industrial equipment. Bars of steel reinforcement along with concrete as structural reinforcement used in construction is the widest application of steel in the world. 14% goes into infrastructure such as bridges, rail tracks and so on, while 42% is used as structural steel in the construction of buildings. The aluminium industry is one of the largest energy consumers after iron and steel. Annually around 45 million tons of aluminium is manufactured around the world. Of this, 24% is used in the construction sector, 20% goes into making industrial equipment, 29% goes into metal product manufacturing and the largest share, 27% is used in the transport sector. This is because of the relatively lightness of aluminium as a structural material. 80% of all aluminium goes into making car frames, engines and chassis elements. 7% is used for making large truck chassis and 2% is used by trains and the aerospace industry, the latter using aluminium extensively for making aircraft frames. 7% of the aluminium goes into making electric appliances, 13% into making packaging such as soda cans and wrapping foil and 9% is used for other purposes such as paints and pigments and powder metallurgy. 7% of the aluminium is used in making elements for industrial heating and ventilation. 4% is used in electrical equipment and 9% is used in making electrical cabling. 24% of all the aluminium is used to make building elements such as window frames, rain gutters and pipes. 
Now that we have seen the importance of steel and aluminium in our daily life, let us take a look at the processes that make these industries so energy intensive. Every year, about 38 exajoules of energy is required to manufacture the, 10 of the 1040 million tons of steel that is used globally. Iron ore is the raw material that is mined from the earth to make steel. The ore needs to be purified and treated in blast furnaces. The blast furnace is a high temperature furnace where iron ore and coal is fed along with lime and heated with hot air and other fuels. The lime reacts with the impurities which can be removed from the bottom. This is the most energy intensive process in the entire chain. The ore can also be purified through oxidation and direct reduction. An electric arc furnace is used to reduce scrap iron from making steel. The molten steel is then cast into slabs, blooms or billets and water cooled. The majority of the steel is cast continuously although a small fraction is still cast as ingots. The cast steel is coated with a range of metals such as tin and zinc heated and rolled into sections, bars or slabs and formed into a stock product by extrusion and other forming techniques. Stock steel is cut, bent and welded as required to fabricate its wide range of products. The final fabrication often requires high temperature processes and hence is also an energy intensive process. The global production of, uh, of aluminium uses about 7.6 exajoules per year. Aluminium is mined from bauxite before being treated with hot caustic soda to form sodium aluminate. Aluminium can also be formed by remelting and purifying scrap. The sodium aluminate or alumina is dissolved in a cryolite solution at about 950 degrees Celsius. Graphite electrodes electrolyze the alumina, alumina and molten aluminium is deposited. Due to the high temperatures, electrolysis is the most energy intensive step in the manufacture of aluminium. The molten aluminium is cooled and cast into ingots or slabs. It can also be mixed with different metals to form alloys. The cast aluminium is then heated to around 500 degrees Celsius before rolling into sheets of the required thickness. The ingot can also be drawn into wires by extrusion and the cast aluminium can be molded into required shape to use as an end product. Apart from iron and steel and aluminium, other industries also produce a vast amount of material annually, consuming an enormous amount of energy. The annual production of cement currently stands at around 2,800 million tons across the world, far greater than the global annual steel production. Aluminium, being a very light material, stands at the bottom of this table at 45 million tons per year. Now, let us look at what these numbers mean for us at a personal level. The green column shows the amount of material each of us uses on average every year. Even if you not have built any new structures recently, the, the global construction industry uses a large amount of cement. This means that every year each of us uses the equivalent of 378 kilograms of cement. The orange column shows the energy used by these materials on a daily basis. Every day, each of us indirectly consumes 3.75 kilowatt hours for cement use alone. If you recall the earlier lectures, the human unit was equal to 2.9 kilowatt hours. This means that our daily energy use for cement exceeds the amount of energy we use to feed ourselves. Isn't that some food for thought? Let's go back to our rough estimates. We looked at energy use in transportation and buildings in the previous lectures. 
we estimate that the global energy use associated with all industrial activities covers the rest of this pie chart and stands at around 54% of the total energy used in the world today. Can renewable energy technologies help bring these numbers down? How much energy is associated with the production of renewable energy? We shall look at these questions and delve deeper into the world of sustainable energy in the coming weeks.